Okay, so let's come on to the next key concept. So um, for what we're going to come on to later, this is probably the um, most important concept to get. And we've kind of covered it a little as we've been going through <laughs> looking at these different conceptual questions. So this is uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So we, we had a look at Kirchhoff's current law, which just said that the current flowing into a node is equal to the current flowing out of a node. So it's just based on the fact that current can't appear or, or disappear. Right? So whatever flows into a branch must flow out of the branch. Kirchhoff's voltage law is related to voltages. Right? But this, this doesn't apply to, to nodes. Right? Voltages act between points. Right? So it's actually going to be, it actually applies to loops. But to explain that, I'm going to come back to our water analogy again. So we'll, we'll start off by thinking about a water circuit. So we've got a water circuit here with a pump that's pumping some water around a water circuit. So we could put a pressure meter here and, and measure the difference in pressure between this side and this side, and that would be the equivalent of the voltage of, of a battery in, a, in an electrical circuit. So um, <coughs> this pressure meter might read plus 12, whatever units of pressure we're, we're measuring, um, but it's, it's only in relation between two points. So it's just saying this side is 12 units of pressure higher than this side. Right, and, and that's I'm going to say that's what that pump can do. It can just add 12 <coughs> units of pressure from one side compared to the other. And the ball is going to go around this circuit, and then it's going to get to a restriction in the flow. So it's like the, the flow has been pinched off, so it's now half of that water to get through there. And I hope you can imagine then we've got water flowing this way, and then if there's a restriction in the flow here. It's going to it's going to kind of back up and there'll be a higher pressure on this side than on this side. Right, so if we put in a, a pressure meter here and um, connect it up the same way as this one, right now we've got this side is higher pressure than this side. So we've got a, a drop in pressure. Right? So the, the pump has added some pressure. This restriction in the flow caused a drop in pressure. And then if we've got another restriction in the flow, then again, if we put another um, pressure meter here, we'd see another difference in pressure between those sides. And the, the amount of difference in pressure will be dictated by how much we restrict that flow. So if we really pinch off the flow, then we'd, we'd expect a bigger drop in pressure from one side to the other. The key, the key concept to realize here is that after we get these pressure drops going through the restrictions in the flow, the pressure must be whatever the inlet pressure of this pump is. Right? So this, we'll call this like our zero pressure or our reference pressure, whatever we want. The pump is just adding some pressure to that. So by the time the water gets, goes around the circuit, gets back to here, just, just by the definition of what we've said the pump is doing, that it's adding some certain amount of pressure, the pressure must be back to that reference level. No matter what happens in this circuit, we can have as much branching out as we want. The, the water can go in any number of different pipes. But once it gets back here to this inlet, it must be at that base pressure where, we, where we're then going to add that pressure to. So the law is in terms of the water circuit, whatever pressure increase we get from um, a, a pump in a water circuit going around the loop, that must be equal to the total pressure drops we get in going around that loop. Um, and it doesn't matter how complicated it is, we can have as many restrictions that we like in that flow, but just by just by definition of what that pump is doing and, and how these pressures arrange themselves around, a, around a, a water circuit, then 
these pressure drops, we add them together, must equal that pressure increase. And so we've got the same thing going on in an electrical circuit. So if we replace our pump with a battery and our, our pressure meter with a voltmeter, then we can measure the voltage of this battery and we know we measure this side is 12 volts higher than this side. Right, and that's just our definition of what the battery is doing. It adds 12 volts to one side of it than compared to the other. Right, so this, this is like our reference level. And then again, you've got current flowing around the circuit, we get to a resistor, and if we measure um, the voltage over that resistor, we see some voltage drop. Right, so the battery is adding voltage, we go around the loop, then the, the resistor will cause a voltage drop. And similarly to the water circuit, the, the sum of these voltage drops must equal the, the voltage that is added by the battery. Because by the time we get back here, we must be at the reference level that the battery is adding the voltage to. So the, the battery just by definition adds a particular voltage um, on its positive terminal compared to the, the reference level of its negative terminal. So it's it's quite a bit of a trickier concept than the <coughs> current law, I think, but um, so hopefully you'll um, be able to understand as we go through this and do some conceptual questions on this. So 